one bright spot on the HTC Incredible is the 8 megapixel camera with autofocus and dual LED flash. While a lot of the reason the camera is so good is just hardware related, the software really comes into play with the Incredible. Once you're actually in the camera, note that the optical trackpad is what you use to take the picture, and as soon as you take it, you have the option to go back to the camera, delete it, share it, using Bluetooth, Facebook, Flickr, Gmail, or any of these methods, or you can check it out in the gallery. Right on the home screen, you can set the phone to flash automatically when it's needed, or toggle it to flash no matter what, or even turn the flash off. And then the plus minus is a zoom mechanism, so if you press that on the left, you can scroll that up and down to zoom in. But I found it easier instead to just actually, if you touch the screen and put your finger up and down no matter what, it would do the same effect. So you don't really need to touch the plus or minus. In the bottom right hand corner, anytime you press that, you'll jump directly to the gallery. And again, you have those options of seeing more options, sharing, deleting, and going back to the camera. The real magic of the incredible camera comes from this little arrow here over on the left. So if we press that, we get a boatload of options. First, we can toggle between photo and video. The next two I like the most. We can change the brightness, so make it really bright or darken it. We can adjust the contrast, saturation, and sharpness. So let's just play with a couple here. Let's see how that looks. And you probably can't tell much of a difference here on this Twix bar. But when you're dealing with different elements, with different sunlight, maybe you want to uh, put the contrast up for a sunset, there's a ton of different things you can play with. And you can make a situation where you normally wouldn't get any picture, it would just turn out terrible, and get a pretty good picture. And you can likewise take a good picture and adjusting the settings, make it great. So, I mean, there are some other advanced settings in here. Now, this one is something that's on all the Android 2.1 phones. We can change it to grayscale, sepia, negative, solarize, posterize, and aqua. Which, those are okay, but I don't see a huge purpose to a lot of them, uh, unless you're just playing around. Now the bottom one, here's where we get into even more kind of advanced photography features. We've got white balance, so it's set on white balance now, but we can change it to incandescent, fluorescent, daylight, cloudy. So, that's another option. The ISO we can switch. We can change the resolution, and that's going to be how big the picture is. The maximum is uh, 3,264 by 1952. We can change the quality of the image, uh, tur <coughs> uh, turn the self-timer on, we can geotag photos, we can change the metering mode. We can change the review duration, which got kind of annoying at five seconds. It was kind of long, especially if you want to take a bunch of pictures in a row, but you can always uh, turn it off completely. There's flicker adjustment, which I'm not too familiar with flicker, but for those that are, there's that option. Autofocus, you can turn on and off, turn the shutter sound off. You can add a timestamp. Now you can turn a little grid on, and it's nice too that you can reset the default, so if you're playing with a ton of things and you just want to take a regular picture, you can just go ahead and change it back to the stock settings. Now, another thing I like about this autofocus is that you can press some, tap somewhere on there and it will autofocus for whatever, wherever you're tapping. It works okay. I wish it worked a lot better because there are situations where you have something close to you you would love to focus on and and instead even using this little method it will instead focus on the object in the background. So it's a great idea. I wish it was implemented a little bit better though. Uh, and then of course you could turn the autofocus off completely but there isn't really any way to manually focus so um, I mean I would just assume you want to keep autofocus on all the time. In the bottom right hand corner you'll see the little gallery and it will jump to the picture you most recently taken but of course you can take a look at the other pictures we've taken and look at the difference between those two pictures just with the little changes we did in this uh, in this little experiment but again there the options here 
are to go back and look at all your different pictures and they're organized and you can share them on Facebook or Flickr. We can share an individual picture. Well, first of all, let's jump and look at the picture larger. We can share it. Bluetooth, Facebook, Sense, Flickr, Gmail. We showed you these already. We can delete it or we can jump back to the camera. Let's delete that one. Sure. Now things get even crazier because remember we're on the photo tab now. Typically on Android phones that I've seen, when you're in video mode, all you can really do is point and shoot and record the video. That's it. But with HTC Sense and this new uh, camera features, you can also adjust the brightness of the video, change the contrast, saturation, sharpness of the video, use these different effects in the video. So I could record a grayscale video and some of those look actually pretty cool so grayscale is kind of neat on video but I can also change the white balance the resolution uh, and adjust all these different modes in the video which is cool oh yeah and let me go back to reset the default really quick I can also zoom in and out for video which is really cool so all those great features for the camera work for the camcorder as well. Now personally I found the camera gets better results across the board than the camcorder so the you know changing and playing with the effects has a bigger effect on the actual final product but still it's really cool I think that you can use all those different settings to try and optimize and make the best video you can. A couple of options that aren't included that I wish were First of all, up here in the right, you'll see there's a no flash symbol because you cannot use flash with the camcorder. But what if I'm in a dark room, I just want to get some friends close up and keep the LED lights on all the time while I record a video, a short video. You can't do that. So if you're in the dark, uh, you're out of luck. Uh, the other thing about the camera that I think is... Uh, kind of a shame is they do have all these different features and adjusting the camera settings, changing the ISO, changing the white balance, changing the that's great. It's really cool, but for amateurs and you know typically if you're using your phone to take a picture, uh, you're most likely an amateur or you're trying to get something spur of the moment. But I would love to see some just basic settings that will change the contrast and saturation and all that for different situations. So maybe like a close-up, a macro picture of flowers that will have a flower icon, uh, a sports setting, a sunset. So you could just maybe scroll left and right on the bottom or something and choose between some preset types of photos you'd be taking so you don't have to go and adjust everything because personally I found that it took a lot of experimentation to get good pictures yeah if I played with it enough I could get an amazing picture but it would take me you know ten different uh, attempts and it would take a, a whole bunch of time to go through with the settings of course I don't really know what I'm doing at much when it comes to taking pictures someone who's a pro can probably go in there and right away adjust the settings how they need to be the first time but again you're taking pictures with a phone so people who are pros like that probably are lugging around a big DSLR or something with them that being said, I was really pleased with the pictures that the HTC Incredible took. Some of them I thought were really amazing. It did have a lot of bad pictures of me trying to play with the settings and adjusting them not so well. There are things that could be better. The autofocus wasn't spot on. Uh, you know, it would be nice to have some quick options of types of pictures I want to take but all in all the HTC Incredible did get a ton of of great photos and it had great potential it just comes with a little work and a little uh, tinkering but the HTC 8 megapixel camera with autofocus dual LED flash yet another win and of course everybody likes fake bars <laughs>